We're taking the Discovery from Oregon to Banff, Alberta, and back next month, which means close to 2,000 highway miles. Ever since I installed the 3-inch lift, the caster has been wrong, and driving 65 miles an hour would cause the steering to get light and the front to wander. The solution for this is to install caster-corrected radius arms, and I went with these 6-degree arms from Terra Firma. I've been reasonably happy with the Terra Firma lift on my Discovery, but I can't say I'm impressed with the finish on these. The gold paint has very little adhesion, as evidenced by these big chips, right out of the box. The welds don't look all that great either. Still, I doubt I'll break these, and the correction in steering geometry will be nice. Since these radius arms don't come with any bushings installed, I opted for new OEM rubber bushings at both ends. Some people will say that polyurethane bushings are better for this application, but I'm using rubber to keep transferred noise and vibrations to a minimum, and to let the suspension move and flex as much as possible. Despite all the paint they applied to the inside of the bushing holes, the bushings themselves pressed in without any issues. I found that you can pretty easily replace radius arms on a lifted Discovery without having to support the chassis on jack stands, which is pretty nice. The first two bolts that connect the front axle to the chassis via the radius arm came out without issue. The third one, however, had seized itself to the inner bushing sleeve and turned this from an hour-long project into a three-hour ordeal. I'm pretty proud of myself for having the foresight to secure the radius arm with a rope so it didn't fall on my face. You will need to remove the drag link and steering stabilizer behind the axle, as it prevents removal of the radius arm. Once you take care of the inevitable seized fastener or two, installation is relatively straightforward. Start by loosely securing the chassis end of the radius arm in its spot on the frame. Then I used a floor jack to lift the front of the arm into its bracket on the axle. It took some persuasion to get the holes to line up, but a combination of rocking the truck back and forth and using a floor jack will likely get you there. Unfortunately, I didn't film the process because that whole Sawzall incident had me struggling to remember why I do any of this in the first place. Once you've gotten all the bolts good and tight, you may realize that the orientation of this large silver washer, which made perfect sense to you when you installed it, is actually the opposite of the way it came from the factory. There's a 0% chance that I'll remove all this stuff to flip that washer, so please tell me you agree with my washer placement in the comments. From here, all that was left to do is put the drag link and steering stabilizer back on and see if driving 65 miles an hour still feels like cheating death.
I'm happy to report that keeping up with the flow of traffic feels way more stable with the extra 6 degrees of caster. It used to wander around a lot and the steering felt really light, but now it feels about how I'd expect a lifted SUV with mud tires, solid axles, and no sway bars to feel.